Hello everyone and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Anthony Salas and on behalf of the American Marketing Association, I'm very happy that you could join us for today's webcast sponsored by Converza and titled, Why Calls Are Better Than Clicks. As part of our continuing effort to be the most relevant force and voice shaping marketing around the world, the AMA offers a variety of resources, training, and tools to enhance lifelong learning and provide you with valuable information and connections. If you go to AMA.org, you will see a full listing of our upcoming events both in person and online. And you can also click through the various resources that are available to you. So at your convenience, we do invite you to go visit AMA.org. And before starting today, just a few quick housekeeping items to make you aware of. We are recording the full presentation, and it will be made available to you very soon after, so look for that coming your way. If you can join us today on Twitter, we would appreciate your engagement at hashtag Converza. So feel free to use that and send out some tweets as the presentation goes on. And if you have any questions, please use the chat feature that you see there to the left of your screen. Any technical questions you might have, you can enter in that area and we'll get to those as quickly as possible. And content related questions, we do encourage you to enter those as the presentation goes on. We will add those to our list of questions and then be addressing them at the end of the formal presentation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker joining us today. We're being joined by McKay Allen, who is the Director of Content and Communications with Converza. And McKay has a lot of insights and information on today's topic that he's going to be sharing with you. So I am now going to turn it over to him to start today's presentation. Thanks, Anthony. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having us. And uh, thanks to everybody for uh, joining. We've got a really large crowd today. Hopefully the information is useful to you and, and, and helpful. The title of today's presentation is Why Calls Are Better Than Clicks. And uh, by the end of the presentation, you're going to know a little bit more uh, about phone calls specifically, but also ways you can improve your marketing generally and get more data from your marketing. So that's, that's what we're here to help you with. Um, a little bit more about me and then about Converza as well. So uh, as Anthony said, uh, my name is McKay Allen. I'm the Director of Content and Communications at Converza. Um, prior to joining the company, I was a news anchor and reporter. Um, since joining the company, I've spoken at various events uh, as well as written for for entities like Search Engine Journal and Search Engine Watch and Mobile Marketing Watch, groups like that. A little bit about Converza. So we recently changed our name from Log My Calls in May of this year. So you may know us as Log My Calls uh, instead of Converza. Uh, we've done a fair bit of marketing as Log My Calls. You've probably heard of us as that before. Um, we recently acquired um, the call tracking and publishing division of CallSource. Um, headquartered in Salt Lake City. We also have offices in Southern California. Uh, and we're really a call marketing optimization uh, company and platform that focuses on three things. First is attribution. That's basic call tracking. So if you're a marketer, um, you've probably heard of call tracking before. Uh, basically it tells you which ads, campaigns, and keywords generate phone calls and which don't. That's what call tracking uh, is and, and, and does. Uh, we also do analytics, so deep analytics from phone calls. We run the calls through our voice recognition system, and we're able to extract data like whether or not the call resulted in a sale or a reservation or an appointment, and determine really what happened on the call. That's sort of our goal. And so get deep, deep data from phone calls. That's important. And then the third thing is automation. So we're really the first tool that provides rules-based marketing automation for phone calls. We're also integrated with a lot of tools like Aquizio and Kinshu that allow you to automate your bid management and automate your AdWords and PPC using some of the data from the call tracking and the conversation analysis pieces uh, of what we do. So that's a little bit about us. Uh, you can see some of the data here in our dashboard. Uh, just how it looks and how it's displayed. You can also get this data in your own systems and your own dashboards as well. You can also listen to calls, which is great. So first let's talk about the importance of phone calls. Um, Google announced in March actually that mobile search has now passed, has usurped uh, desktop search in, in many countries. The U.S. Uh, that became the case in March already happened in Western Europe and in Japan a few years ago. 
So this, this quote here is from, um, from the Google blog inside AdWords. They said, this pre presents a tremendous opportunity for marketers to reach people throughout all the new touch points of a customer's path to purchase. So we're going to talk about some of those opportunities today uh, in relation to mobile search and specifically phone calls. So our data shows, and, and this data, some of this data comes from Google, some of this comes from us as well. But data across the industry shows that when people make phone calls, they generally make larger revenue decisions. So people aren't making phone calls for $5 purchases. They're making phone calls for larger purchases. And generally our clients are companies that have larger purchases, uh, larger items or services to sell. And the larger they are, the more important those phone calls are to that business. Uh, the other thing we find, and we'll talk more about the data related to this in a moment, but calls are lower in the sales funnel than web leads are. You think about web leads and you think about the typical funnel process. You start at the top, you get an email address and a first name and a last name, maybe a company name. Uh, perhaps you find out how many people work for that company. You start to nurture them with email marketing, with additional pieces of content. Maybe you have someone on your sales team call them. This process can take days, weeks, months, etc. Uh, but, it, but it's a typical sort of traditional sales funnel process. Most of the leads, the vast majority of those leads are weeded out before they spend any money. Uh, and they're just sitting in your, your marketing automation system, taking up space, and opening emails occasionally. Phone calls, on the other hand, are much, much lower in the funnel, significantly lower in the funnel. So across the entire marketing world, the the uh, percentage of web leads that actually convert to revenue within the next three months is 2%. That means 98% of the leads that fill out a form on your, on your site. So maybe that's a form for a demo request, or maybe it's a form for an appointment time, or a form just uh, for information. 98% of those people will never purchase from you within the next three months at least. That's a big deal. That means you're spending a lot of money to generate a lot of leads that are not going to spend money with you. On the other hand, our data across over 500,000 phone calls in the first half of 2015 found that 31% of calls that we analyzed across a variety of industries resulted in revenue within three months. 31% compared to 2%. Calls, as I said, are much lower in the funnel. So when it comes to mobile leads and specifically phone calls, the time between the initial awareness stage and the action stage is shortened. It's truncated. So instead of weeks or months from the time of discovery to making a purchase, calls are often made within minutes of viewing an ad or a landing page, and purchases are made within minutes of that interaction. So phone calls are the fastest and most straightforward path toward a conversion. By conversion here we mean a, sell, a sale typically. We want people to buy something. That's, that's really the, the goal, right? And so you have, you have a situation where calls are becoming more common because of mobile search. Mobile search is becoming more common. And calls produce revenue more frequently and with greater ease than web leads do. So this, this influx of phone calls are dramatic. Now, of course, there's a lot more web leads than there are phone calls. So in our business, for example, two months ago was the last time I looked at this data. Internally, about 95% of our total leads were web leads. So this is internally. These are leads that we get for our company. So this is not across our clients. This is just for us and our marketing team. So 95% of our leads were web leads. So these are people who attended a webinar. These are people who downloaded a white paper, people who requested a demo on our site. Web leads, right? Um, the vast majority were, were web leads. Only about 4% of our leads were phone calls. Now here's the interesting thing. Those 4% that were phone calls produced around 25% of our revenue. So phone calls produced revenue at a much higher clip, even for us, than did uh, uh, other types of leads. Now that's significant. Why? Because our business is not our focus, <laughs> right, in terms, of, in terms of who we typically go after. Uh, <clears throat> there are certain industries that generate a lot of phone calls. B2B software is probably not at the top of that list, and yet even in our industry, phone calls matter a lot. We try to generate those with our marketing activities, and we specifically try, uh, try to convert those at a, at a high, high rate. 
So if 31% of calls convert to, to revenue within three months compared to 2% of web leads, so obviously the corollary to this is that you need far fewer uh, phone calls converting at 31% to produce the revenue equal to form fills converting at 2%. So the bottom line is, as a marketer, you need to generate far fewer phone calls to do the same work as you would for far more web leads. A new uh, piece of data from BIA Kelsey, which is a uh, private analysis firm, indicated that 86% of businesses say calls are the best leads they receive. That 14% really is brick and mortar retailers, like a local boutique that sells purses. Phone calls don't really matter to that, that uh, company, nor do they matter for sit-down restaurants typically, companies like that. But for other businesses, phone calls matter, and they're mattering a lot more because of the increasing uh, relevance and uh, um, prevalence of mobile search. Now this stat came from Google earlier this year in May. 71% of mobile searchers routinely make phone calls to businesses. That's really the crux just to end this section on the importance of phone calls. 71% of mobile searchers make phone calls to businesses. That matters a lot. It changes the, changes the uh, marketing goal of your campaigns, if you will. So we'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how to generate more phone calls, but I just want to reiterate some of the headlines, the highlights from this section that we just discussed. First, mobile search has now surpassed desktop search. That's a big deal. Second, uh, phone calls are made by mobile searchers 71% of the time, also a big deal. Calls convert far more frequently than web leads do to revenue, and generally people who are calling are buying something that is a higher dollar or higher ticket value than someone who is simply filling out a form or purchasing something via e-commerce on a site. All right, let's talk about some of the data from phone calls. There's a couple ways to get data from phone calls, and some of the some of the feedback we've heard from marketers recently that I actually heard uh, a couple days ago on a different webinar was one of the hesitations that, that marketers have had for generating a lot of phone calls is number one, they're not operationally prepared for it. Web leads are just easier to track through their systems, right? Their marketing automation systems, their CRMs are built to capture web leads. And so operationally, people didn't want to think about phone calls, number one. And number two was there simply wasn't a lot of data available about phone calls. And so there was a massive blind spot there, and so people just thought, I'm just going to avoid that. I'm not going to worry about generating phone calls because I don't want to worry about gathering the data from phone calls because it's a challenge to do so. Um, and so let's talk about some of the data we can gather from phone calls. Uh, call tracking, first of all. I want to be specific about what call tracking is. So you can pinpoint the exact campaigns, the ad groups if you're using AdWords, and even keywords that are generating phone calls. So this is really about attribution. This is about getting attribution information and improving and optimizing your campaigns. So most of you are probably familiar with call tracking, but I'll just I'll explain it a little bit more in depth. One of the ways it works is if I were to visit your website, let's say you're using call tracking. If I visit your website via a Google AdWords ad, I would see a unique phone number that is unique to me. That number would dynamically display on your website with a piece of JavaScript that we give you. Now if someone else visits your website, they would see a different unique phone number that is specific to them. That allows our system the ability to determine precisely which source, which ad campaign, keyword, etc., generated that phone call and pushed that phone call to your site. So it's really like Google Analytics for the phone. So when you go to Google Analytics and you can see the source of every single click and the click path, our system allows you to do a very similar thing except it's for people who call you. So you can see the people who visit you from certain ads as well as the people who call you as a result of certain ads because every person is going to get a unique phone number on that page. Now you can also use it for more static sort of old school traditional marketing. You can put a different phone number on your direct mail pieces, uh, on your TV ads, and your radio ads, etc. But really there's a lot of power with the online use of it. So you can uh, display a unique phone number to each visitor to your site and specifically track which sources are generating phone calls. Now that's really useful alone. I want to be clear, that's really useful alone. If there was no other data gathered, that's still valuable stuff. It still allows you to optimize because you know, of course, which ads are generating phone calls. You spend more money on those, and then the ads that aren't, you, you stop spending money on those. But our system doesn't stop there, and the data that you can gather from phone calls doesn't stop there either. So 
we, we launched recently a tool called Conversation Analytics. The idea basically is that call tracking tells you what happened before the phone call rings, right? It tells you which source generated the call. Conversation Analytics tells you what happened on the phone call. It actually fills in the gaps. So you can see here on the graphic on your screen, this is sort of how it works to hopefully give you an idea. Um, if someone's making a phone call, our system uh, tracks those words and phrases that are set on the call. And then it analyzes those, and with a series of algorithms, hundreds of thousands of different algorithms that we've built into the system, we're able to extract specific data from the phone calls themselves. This data is valuable in some cases uh, on an individual call-by-call -call basis. It's also valuable, really valuable in the aggregate, right? So you can look at this on a campaign basis. So here's some examples of the data we can gather, and I'll get into some more specifics in a moment. But the idea is, um, you can track, for example, missed opportunities. So let's say that you had a campaign, you got 5,000 phone calls, and you were able to determine that 19% of those were missed opportunities for revenue. Our system can determine that. It can then give you a list of those missed opportunity phone calls that you can then plug into your dial back system or just manually look at a spreadsheet and call people back and reclaim revenue that was totally lost. I'll give you an example. So there was a client that we were doing a pilot for um, that were still in the stages of a pilot for that they wanted, they wanted uh, several hundred phone calls analyzed. Their average um, price, their average uh, uh, transaction, that's the word I'm looking for, their transaction cost was $700. So 500 phone calls we analyzed, we found that 19% of those were missed opportunities. So these were good leads. They were sales inquiries that did not result in revenue. And so our system flagged 19% of those 500 calls as uh, missed opportunities. So 500 times 0.19, this is riveting webinars right here, that's 95 phone calls. So 95 of the 500 phone calls our system flagged as missed opportunities. If you times that by 700, which is the average transaction cost, that's a potential of $66,000 that is lost, that was gone, that was out of their, their uh, uh, any, they weren't going to get that revenue. It was gone. They were going to a competitor. Now what they did is they then put those 95 calls, those, that 19% of that 500, uh, and they called those people back. They were able to reclaim 31% of those 95 calls. And by reclaim, that's not the right word. Claim is the right word. They never had them to begin with. They were missed opportunities. So 29 calls they were able to get revenue from that were lost, that were gone. Times that by 700, that's $20,000. So if you could extrapolate that out to thousands and thousands of phone calls, for every 500 phone calls, they're, they're getting $20,000 in what was missed opportunity revenue that they're now capturing. That's a big deal. That, that pays for this system 10 times over right off the bat. So that, that, that's significant. It matters a lot. The other th couple of things that you should know, this, the system tracks a lot of stuff, but one of the things that it does really well is it tracks conversions. So whether or not the call resulted in an appointment or a sale or a reservation, what happened on the call? Did the call result in your goal? Did it succeed in, in, uh, in the, in the uh, a goal that you wanted to, it to succeed uh, at? So, this is going to depend on your industry. So we have, for example, um, let's say that you're a dentist. You want to track whether or not someone set an appointment on a phone call. Well, our system can track that for you. Now here's the exciting part is you can then track that back to specific ads, campaigns, keywords uh, within AdWords itself. So you can then know, okay, which campaign is producing not just the most phone calls, but the most conversions. That's a big deal. And that's going to dramatically alter the way you think about your marketing and the way you spend your money. So this really does give you valuable insight into specific um, phone calls and pieces of data. Now let's talk about some of the data. So one of the things we did is we, we ran some data specifically around correlation uh, for lead score and conversion. So in April we analyzed over 100,000 phone calls across various clients. And we found that um, when our phone calls resulted in a certain lead score, there was a certain conversion rate that was associated with it. So you can see here that as the lead score for specific groups of phone calls goes up, 
the conversion rate also goes up. We also found that uh, calls generated from AdWords generally produced a higher average conversion rate than other lead sources. Now here's a little bit of interesting data related to conversions. So about 300,000 I think was the number, the sample size that we used. Um, phone calls were analyzed for this piece of data. And we found that of all the, the uh, calls that ran through our system, and again this is across a variety of different industries, right? This is um, a ton of different industries. Some industries are going to be higher than this. Some industries are going to be lower, but this is the average. We found that 29% of the calls resulted in a conversion that we analyzed last quarter. 29% of the calls. Now, as I said, your industry may be higher than that. I see some questions already coming in saying, well, my industry is probably higher. My industry is probably lower. Here's my point. Unless you're analyzing it, you don't know. You're not sure what this number is. You're not sure what the data looks like. Uh, and so our system allows you to get that data. Now what, what does a conversion mean? I see that question coming in right now as well. So a conversion in our system means generally one of four things. First, was there an appointment set? Was there an appointment set on the call at a specific time? Was there a sale made? That one's pretty easy to track. Uh, generally, there's credit card information shared. Was there a reservation made? So did someone reserve a, a product or a service? And then fourth is a little more um, complex. These are for longer term sales cycles, maybe for larger ticket items. But was there a commitment to buy? For example, not many people buy our product on the first phone call. But did they commit to having a contract sent to them? Did they commit to a follow-up phone call? These are the types of things that are part of the more longer term sales cycle that our system tracks. So of those four things, there were 29% of the calls we analyzed in Q1 where those four things happened. One of those four things happened, I should say. So be very interested to see uh, what your conversion rates are in your industries and in your businesses. All right, we worry, we've done a lot of webinars about conversation analytics and about the importance of phone calls, and we always have people ask about accuracy, about how accurate it is. And so we thought, you know what, let's, let's show people the process we go through um, to make it really accurate. And so you'll see this, how it works. And we're actually getting the more, more questions about that today is how, do we run into issues with this? How does it work? Number one question we get. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. Um, this was a part of a, a customization and an audit that we did with a client that was in the home services industry. This is real data. So what we do dur through every audit is we analyze two pieces of data. The first is we analyze um, which phrases are producing, um, are producing certain uh, statistical readings in our system. That's number one. But the second thing we do, and the far more important thing that we do, is we track whether or not humans agree with what our system says. So what percentage of time, if our system says it was a conversion, do our humans also agree with that? So here's an example. Uh, in the first phase, uh, our system believed there were 30 conversion, uh, conversions. Uh, or rather, humans believe there were 30 conversions. Our system said that uh, <clears throat> our system accurately labeled 23 of those and inaccurately labeled 7 of those. That's a 78% accuracy rate on the first run. So what we found was that uh, 4 of those were really easy fixes. They were just things we needed to add to our algorithms. That then therefore made it 90% accurate. The other 3 were more subjective changes. These were phrases that were in the system, or that were on the call rather, that our system wasn't really sure what to make of until we told it what to make of it. So were they a conversion or not? Uh, you can see that some of those phrases there. Uh, and so simply it's just a matter of us fine tuning it to get it more accurate. You can see here as well, this is for missed opportunities. Uh, humans found that there were 32 missed opportunities. Our system accurately labeled 20 of those and inaccurately labeled 12 of those. Now I want to make a point and step back with missed opportunities. Even if the accuracy rate was 1%, you're still getting missed opportunities that you would otherwise not get. Right? This is, these are people that are otherwise lost that you are now getting. So even if it was a 1% accuracy, it's still valuable. Uh, obviously it's much, much higher than that. So you can see here of the calls that were inaccurately labeled, Two were fixed in the audit of another client. Five were algorithm changes that would have correctly identified the call, which leaves only three 
that were still inaccurate, which is a 92% accuracy rate in this example. And these were based on transcription errors. And we have people asking, well, what do you do with issues with listening technology? What if the caller is hard to understand? What if their audio quality is bad? Yes, there are issues with that. And you can see that it happens in a, in a small percentage of cases. Our system just simply didn't hear it correctly because of somebody's accent or because of somebody's uh, uh, bad audio quality. We really, we really have to have really good audio quality for best results. And so the partners we work with, we record calls in really high audio quality, but the partners that we work with that record phone calls have to have really great audio quality as well. Uh, we demand that of them. And so you can see what the accuracy does here. The point being, this is a system that is fine-tuned and is, is, uh, works really well uh, when, when, uh, when fine-tuned. And as I mentioned with missed opportunity, the entire point, the whole goal here is to capture revenue that you would have otherwise not captured. And so any level of accuracy, frankly, and missed opportunity is a big deal. Um, the other thing that I would mention as well with conversion rates is imagine being able, imagine being able to track which ads that you are buying on AdWords, which keywords you're buying on AdWords, are generating calls that are resulting in revenue. Man, that optimizes your campaigns automatically. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal in terms of how you spend your marketing dollars. The only other thing I'll add before we close is that we have some specific integrations already built with companies like Acquisio, which is a bid management system, that allow you to automatically adjust your bidding in real time. So you can set up a rule within Acquisio that says, okay, uh, when a certain ad group produces phone calls that have a 30% conversion rate, I want to increase my bid on that keyword by 13% or whatever. That allows you to automatically bid more on keywords and ad groups that are generating really good phone calls for you. And then lower bids, maybe if you're getting an a, a ad group or keyword that is generating conversion rates that are below 5% or 10%, you can change your bidding strategy so you're not buying or bidding as much on those keywords or even buying those keywords at all. You can do that automatically. So it will automatically change those bidding strategies for you in real time. So this is really about in-depth optimization. Um, if you had a web analytics tool that was simply giving you data about which uh, marketing channels generated clicks, that would be a really bad, bad web analytics tool in 2015. You wouldn't use that tool. And yet that's what basic call tracking does. It's just very basic data about source information. Um, it's not data about what happened on the call. You wouldn't accept that level of data from your web analytics tools and you shouldn't from your phone analytics tools either. Uh, just to reiterate, summarize some of the main points. First, phone calls matter a lot. Uh, mobile search is now more prominent than web search, which means more people are going to interact with your company on their smartphone than on their desktop. Because of that, phone calls are now more popular, common, and preferred than ever before to your business. And then third, that's a good thing. That's not a scary thing because calls generate revenue more frequently than clicks and they generate higher dollar revenue than clicks do. So it matters a lot. And then finally, there are ways to get really useful data out of phone calls. Now, there used to, there used to be a lot of deficiencies there, but there are no longer. There's a lot of, lot of uh, data there that you can use. So with that, Anthony, why don't we move into some Q&A and, uh, and see uh, what questions are, are coming through. Yep, and we definitely have some questions. Um, a lot of good ones have come in. Um, before we start addressing those, just a quick reminder everyone, if you do still have a question, um, get it into that chat feature so we can add it to the list here. And uh, we'll be addressing as many as uh, we have time for. So. Um, I'm going to start off with some questions for you, McKay, and I'm going to just actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to pull back on the slides because uh, we had some of them kind of referring to one of the ones, uh, I'm going to go, I believe, just as a reference, this one here, uh, where you kind of broke down in percentages here. So yeah, you bet. Um, first question here for you on uh, this slide uh, from Alan, and he wants to know, so comparing kind of the uh, percentages here, how do the numbers of web leads and calls compare um, in this slide. Um, so is it more, are, are there more, are there many more web leads or 
vice versa. I mean. Yeah, there's all there's a lot more web leads, and it, it depends on the type of business, I would say, um, because obviously, you know, if you're a if you're a you know tire shop, you're going to get a lot more phone calls. Um, but yeah, across the marketing landscape, there's a lot more f web leads than phone calls, no question about it. Uh, and so yeah, there's a sense that there's a significant significantly higher number of web leads um, that produce not much more revenue than a lot fewer phone calls uh, in our database. And again, another uh, question kind of sticking with this one. Um, so what role does web nurturing play in getting that 31% call conversion? Web nurturing meaning sending emails to people once they're in your system, you know, traditional email nurturing, is that what they mean, Anthony, I assume? I would assume. Um, this question came in from Ralph, and uh, Ralph, if you want to clarify, maybe we'll go along with that assumption, but uh, Ralph, if you want to clarify further, please do. Yeah, so that's, I think, the exciting thing about phone calls is it's not dependent on nurturing. It's really dependent on your, effective, your ability to effectively generate phone calls to begin with. So are you doing paid search on a mobile, uh, uh, on AdWords specifically for mobile, for example? Are you trying to generate phone calls? Do you have a phone, call prom a phone number prominently featured on your website? Do you have phrases like call now or call today on your site? It's really not about nurturing um, because these people enter the funnel very, very low. So there isn't much nurturing needed. Um, this is really about can you effectively generate phone calls the first time? Uh, because again, these people don't need nurturing. They're entering ready to buy. That's the exciting thing with phone calls is they've already done the research. They've already wandered around your website and now they maybe have a final question or two before they're ready to pull the tr trigger. That's how it, how it uh, generally works with phone calls. Got it. And a um, question from Cindy on that is, so in terms of the phone calls themselves, is it the prospect, is this measuring the prospect calling the vendor, or is it the vendor calling out to the prospects? This is all inbound data. Okay, so it's so this is data. Yeah, this is data specific to people calling your business after right. tapping with their little thumb on their smartphone or dialing the number from your website. Got it. So the prospect calling in uh, as correct doing their research and what have you, as you said. So yes. Okay. Um, and then another question, kind of uh, on this same slide here. Uh, this one's from Anne. Um, kind of a path to purchase question. So her question is, can you tell that these calls that convert to money 31% of the time uh, weren't one of the leads that maybe didn't convert um, three months ago? Is there a way to kind of break that down? Yeah, that's a really good question. So yeah, there are ways to match up the phone numbers. So for example, if you've got a customer record in Salesforce uh, in your CRM, and that number has a, and that customer record of course has you know first name last name and email associated with it a phone number associated with it if that phone number matches the number they called uh, on right if that that's the same phone number that they called from uh, yeah it can be matched up um, and of course there is an element of someone was a web lead before and then they called and purchased but for the purposes of the data specifically those numbers are separate. Those are separate, but that is going to happen with your own business, right? Like you're going to have, you're going to have leads that um, fill out a form and get emails for two months and then call you and make a purchase. That will happen. Um, just again, goes to my point that these people are, once they make a phone call, they're ready to go. Yep, excellent. Makes sense. So thank you. Um, a couple of questions here from Alan. Um, first one being, um, do you have any data on the effectiveness of automated calls um, and callbacks versus, I guess, actual um, what he deems here human calls? So you know, individuals live uh, making these calls here. Yeah, I don't. Again, we're not really focused on outbound calls. There's tools that are are focused on that, right? Like there's a tool called Five Nine. There's tools called InsightSales.com. Tools like that that are really focused on, you know, power dialing, right? Like doing automated callbacks, uh, doing outbound calls and fast dialing, things like that. We're not. Our goal is trying to give you more data about what happens on phone calls and which sources generated phone calls. That's really our goal. And so we don't have any data about that because we don't, we don't uh, uh, 
deal with that at all. And another question that came in, so that may be kind of uh, uh, kind of in that same bucket, if you will. Um, does that kind of uh, apply to robo dials or junk calls, things of that sort? Again, because that's more of an outbound type of thing. Yeah, so there's two parts to the robo dialing. So we don't have any data about the effectiveness of, of companies doing like robo calls and outbound dialing because we don't track that. That's not part of our, our value proposition. But we do have tools in place. Spam calls are becoming a bigger and bigger issue, uh, a massive issue in, in fact for companies. So um, companies are getting a lot of junk calls uh, and they're clouding and cluttering systems and, and taking people's time. And so our system actually has several features that allow you to um, cut down on the number of those types of calls you're getting. So whether it's blocking certain numbers, whether it's using conversation analytics to determine which callers are uh, giving you um, uh, robocalls and spam calls, our system has ways of eliminating those. I, w I don't want to use the word eliminating. I shouldn't say that, but reducing those. All right, and just in regards to uh, kind of missed opportunities, if you will. Um, so another question came in is, you know, is there a way to kind of track that or reasons for those? Would it be uh, maybe that they were on hold too long, you know, waiting for someone to respond? Maybe it was a bad customer rep uh, needed more info, that kind of thing. Is there any way to kind of track those missed opportunities? Yes, there is. So our system also provides a sales skills score for every single phone call. So you're going to be able to track with, with precision which phone calls have really high, uh, in which phone calls the rep performed well and which phone calls the rep didn't. And of course you'll be able to marry that back to certain reps. That's easy. But that is a part of a missed opportunity, but not the, maybe not even the most important part. There are a lot of factors, right? There's a lot of factors relating to how, how ready the person is, uh, how well the person sold on the phone, but then also did they disagree with the pricing? Did they have questions about the uh, product or service that the person was unable to answer? There's a lot of factors there, and you can see those factors as you look at – I mean, the, the more missed opportunities you have, if you have several thousand missed opportunities, you're going to be able to see some patterns emerge about why those are happening. Um, and uh, really, of course, the main thing with missed opportunities is just being able to, to consume those and get a list of those and call those people back. And that can happen in a lot of ways. Like we can deliver you a list of – you can download a spreadsheet that has missed opportunities. You can get an alert via text message or email when there's a missed opportunity in real time, like right when it happens. Um, we can also send the, that data directly into your call center system uh, so you can immediately call those people back or into your CRM if you don't have a call center so you can have a list of those right at your fingertips. So there's a lot of ways to consume that data and get those, get those uh, missed opportunities taken care of and actually claim revenue from them. And just to kind of clarify again too, we've had an, uh, a couple of other questions come in in regards to outbound, um, like one specifically outbound B2B. Um, what we're talking about primarily here is inbound, but I mean, is there anything you want to kind of elaborate on or discuss in regards to outbound at all? No, I think the main, I mean, you can certainly use the call analysis piece of this on an outbound system. I mean, so if you already have a call recording system in place, um, our system can analyze those call recordings regardless of whether they're inbound or outbound and give you data. That's, that's going to be useful to you. Um, however, as I said, you know, most of our clients use our system for inbound phone calls. They track, um, they want to track, okay, which sources are generating phone calls, how many phone calls came from this, you know, that hundred grand or $10,000 I spent on AdWords, how many came from this TV ad that I ran, how many phone calls came from those sources, and more importantly, what happened on those phone calls, what happened to all that money that I spent. That's really what most of our clients are trying to do. If you did want to use it for outbound, um, you just use this another system as a call recording system, and then you could have us analyze the calls for you. Okay, great. Um, question now from Aaron who wants to know, uh, is there a way to protect sensitive data when you're transcribing calls? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, there's two ways that we do this. The first is just gradated access. 
So you control who has access to the system. And you actually don't see the transcription, so there's no concern with that at all. You do have access to the call recordings though if you want. So we can, you can obviously control who, who can listen to those recordings. Um, that's number one. So that's the first level of security and works for 99% of our clients. We also do have a PCI compliance feature that removes personal credit card information. Um, just redacts that from the phone call. So as our system is analyzing the call, it hears you know, several numbers in sequence with an expiration date, and it just takes that out of the call. Just removes it altogether. So even if someone listen, is listening to the recording, they can't hear that. It's gone. So there's, yeah, it's a really secure system, and the main burden of security rests with people who control the access to the system. So if you're a, you know, if you're if you don't want your employees or people in a different department to have access, don't provide them access. Just have their um, make it make sh make them uh, available to see the data, but not um, listen to calls, for example. And a uh, couple of questions here from Keith. Uh, first one is, um, does the call data integrate with other tools like Salesforce or other type of tools like that? Yeah. So we're building integrations all the time, like custom turnkey integrations. Uh, it can really integrate with any SaaS platform with the system of webhooks and API calls, and there's sometimes custom work that needs to be done there. Um, but we do have a series of integrations that are already built. Um, Salesforce is one we do, we do not have built currently um, you know, that is turnkey. However, as I said, you can do pretty much anything and everything you want to with some webhooks and API um, calls. So, but we do have several integrations built, and we're building more all the time. And is the call tracking uh, that service, is it available on a global level, um, obviously outside the U.S., or is it more just uh, within the U.S. itself? It's North America based. Um, we, we just use uh, you know, the U.S. Canada numbers at this point, so no overseas availability. And a uh, question kind of going back to um, our slide that we have here now. So uh, Chris um, has a question here. He says, in citing the 31% of calls convert to revenue within three months, um, does that mean that you're doing call analysis uh, beyond the first call, or is it more relying on the salesperson uh, to later record the sale with the same customer record that may have been created when the initial call came in? No, analyzing all calls. So analyzing every call in the, in the process. So what we're saying is that of all the calls in our system, um, in that period of time, 31% of them resulted in a conversion. So it's one of those four things, right? A sale made, a follow-up call, uh, an appointment made, a reservation made, or a commitment to buy. Okay. And uh, looks like what, as of right now at least, uh, maybe our last question here uh, in the queue, but. Uh, one more, um, so we were talking earlier about missed opportunities. Um, so the question then is, uh, along with that, um, does that then kind of result in an advo advocating that you know, human callback, so a live call back to do the follow-up, if you will? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, you know, a human is going to be able to more accurately determine um, the best way to approach the person, right? So we'll give you a list of the missed opportunities and then whether you put it in a CRM or just run it from a spreadsheet or run it from your call center software, depending on how sophisticated and large you are, uh, yeah, then just get your folks on the phone and call those people back, and you'll have revenue that comes back to you. And again, I shouldn't say comes back or reclaim because you never had it to begin with, but you'll be able to capture revenue that you otherwise wouldn't have captured. Uh, absolutely. And uh, a couple of others that just came in, so we'll keep going here. Uh, yeah, you're good. appreciate everyone asking lots of good questions. Um, so next one is, so we talked earlier about it being you know, North American based. Um, as far as the language that it's in, is it English only or is there any uh, Spanish language available? Uh, English only. English only is where we're, where we're focused. Okay. Um, the one thing I would say, and I saw a couple questions specifically relating to um, tactics to generate more phone calls as well, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned a couple of these during the presentation, but the things I would focus on are, number one, if you're going to do um, advertising on AdWords or on another pay-per-click tool platform, um, make sure that you're trying to generate phone calls with 
those ads. So put phone numbers in the ads themselves using Google AdWords call extensions. Uh, put phone numbers on your mobile landing pages, on your mobile websites. Make sure those numbers are tappable. Uh, test those. And then the other thing I would suggest is to use call-friendly language. So things like Google did a study about six months ago where they released this data that found that if you use phrases like call now, you'll actually increase the likelihood of getting a phone call by 8 to 10 percent, which is pretty dramatic just for two little words. So call now or call today or call for special offer. And even on your, on your desktop website, make sure you have a phone number there uh, that people can easily see and access uh, and, and make a phone call if they want to. So it's really about using common sense and making the phone call a very easy thing for people to do. And you know something you just mentioned that uh, I, I just want to maybe kind of bring to light again is to make sure that those phone numbers are tappable, as you said, that you know you can click on it and you know, you're going to place the call right there. I've seen a lot of times where the phone number is listed and it's not. Um, so you know obviously a big benefit to making sure that you know they can just basically click on that number and the calls being placed. So that uh, to me is a, is a big one as well. That's exactly right. Yep, that's exactly right. So I hope it's been useful today, Anthony. Thanks for the time and, and thanks for the questions, everyone. We had a ton of questions and a big crowd, so that was great. Uh, I just, the only, the sort of the last thing I would, I would say is the uh, phone calls are becoming more common, not less. And I mean, 10, 15 years ago, you would have said calls are, are dead, right? Everyone was on the web. No one had phones in their pockets. Today that's totally totally flipped. People are, are making phone calls from your website. They want to talk to you. And there's a lot more data available from those phone calls than has ever been available before. So thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Yep, great point. Thanks so much, McKay. Really appreciate you sharing all this information and uh, this last hour with us. So thank you for being here on behalf of the audience. Um, just a couple of quick reminders to everyone as we conclude our webcast. As I mentioned at the start here, we are recording this full presentation and we're going to be sharing it with you um, via email. So look for that coming your way very soon. Um, to those of you that were able to join us on Twitter, we appreciate your engagement there. If you weren't able to join, you can still go and engage after the webcast. Again, the hashtag for today was uh, hashtag Conversa. So if you can, go and engage there. Um, here in a moment we're going to redirect you to a survey page. And if you would take just a moment or two and give us a little bit of feedback about today's webcast. Also let us know what other topics you want to see presented on future AMA webcasts. We uh, really value that input and uh, try to make sure that we're providing you with the resources and information that you're looking for. So if you would help us with that, we'd certainly appreciate it. So in closing, I do want to extend a big thank you to Conversa for sponsoring today's webcast as well as to ReadyTalk for providing the platform that we used. And if you'd like to learn more about ReadyTalk and their services, you can go to readytalk.com forward slash AMA. Last, of course, I want to thank you, the audience, for sharing an hour from your busy day with us. We certainly hope you found this information helpful and look forward to seeing you again very soon on another AMA Thought Leader webcast. That does end our presentation for today. Thanks again for joining everyone. Have a great rest of your day.